Getting straight to these uh, regional equity markets, we have at the moment the Nikkei 225 in uh, Tokyo on the way up by, what, uh, one third of one percent. Seeing some gains here for these exporters, a welter of economic data expected in the next uh, 24 hours or 25 hours or so from uh, China could affect these markets. We do have, though, right now in play, uh, U.S. companies beating estimates, Apple, one of them, of course, and uh, we have generally uh, this all coming as uh, we do see Sony on the way up. Let's have a look at Seoul. Hynex Semiconductor, a chip maker there, which gets about a fifth of its sales in North America on the way up, helping to drive what's uh, happening there in uh, what looks like a rather wintry Seoul. Sydney, let's have a look at the ASX 200. Last time I checked, uh, we had uh, some of these banking groups on the way up, and uh, they're helping to drive the ASX up by a quarter of 1%. Let's uh, kick it out now to uh, what's happening in Singapore briefly. And uh, this is what we have. Straits Times Index. Just down a fraction right now, but overall it is a picture of uh, Asian equities on the way up. Second straight day of uh, rises as uh, we see U.S. earnings beat down as estimates. And uh, because speculation that China's steps to slow inflation will not hurt economic expansion. So that's what we have at the moment. Let's uh, find out about a company, though, which uh, trades here in Hong Kong. It is Rusal. It was the first Russian company to actually come to the market here and have its initial public offering. And that was a month ago uh, today. And Oleg Mukhamadshin is the deputy chief uh, executive of Rusal. Thank you very much, Oleg, for coming in and jo joining us here. Well, no regrets from, uh, of course, uh, listing a year ago. But you're looking to raise money using these so-called dim sum bonds, bonds denominated in Chinese yuan. What's the motivation? Well, we uh, believe that uh, this new market is a very interesting and a very promising market. Uh, you know that it was not allowed for foreign companies uh, to sell uh, their debt on this market uh, before July last year. So now it's possible and uh, we uh, think we should definitely participate on this market. And can you give us some more details? How much are we talking about here? I think uh, you were mentioning something like a billion uh, yuan or something like that. Well, I think for the pilot issue uh, it should be uh, quite a uh, normal uh, size uh, up to uh, 1 billion uh, RMBs. But you're not ruling out that if it goes well and there's a lot of interest here that you could e extend that amount? It's possible. It's possible. It very much depends on the uh, investor appetite and the terms of borrowing. What will you use the money for? Well, uh, you know, we do have a number of operations in the mainland China and also we buy uh, some raw materials uh, in China so we actually uh, export them to uh, Russia so we uh, do have a lot of uh, possibilities to use this process. Where particularly are you looking at investments? What sort of are you thinking about perhaps uh, some M&A activity here? What are you talking about? Well, we're mostly talking about raw material supply. Uh, some raw materials which are needed for uh, primary aluminium production uh, at our smelters in Siberia, like petroleum coke, for example, and also produce uh, cathode blocks uh, in uh, China, in uh, uh, Shanxi province. Um, of course, you do have uh, uh, debt to service as well. I think, what, uh, five billion in loans is thereabouts this year. Is that also part of the reason why you raise this money? Well, it, obviously, uh, we do uh, have certain debt outstanding. And uh, in our plans is to refinance uh, up to five billion uh, U.S. dollars of foreign debt uh, probably by the end of this year. And uh, we just considering a number of alternative instruments and uh, dim sum bond might be one of them. Right, well, of course, uh, you know, you've got growth in China. They've got the numbers out tomorrow. We're you know, expecting 10% growth of there about so 9% people are saying here. What does that mean? How does that translate into aluminium demand? And how much does that rise by? Well, you know, aluminium has the largest uh, bit uh, to GDP. It's uh, 2.4, uh, 2 actually. So it means that Every single percent GDP growth gives you 2.4% uh, growth in demand for uh, aluminium. So for us, clearly, uh, the Chinese market is the most important because China... Okay, let me just say that you've said before, though, I mean, that uh, Chinese demand for aluminium may, may rise 12% this year. So you'd be, by that rationale, looking at about 5%. Uh, economic growth. When if you're getting yeah, we're, we're still very conservative. That's, I don't think, but if it's 2.4, I mean, you're looking at 9, you're looking at about 20% growth. Of, and I'm being conservative. That, that's exactly what happened, for example, uh, in uh, or going to happen in Russia and former CIS countries next year. So we expect 22% growth. And uh, clearly, the uh, Chinese uh, demand for aluminium is growing quite uh, substantially as well due to the, uh, their plans to develop the Western provinces in China, etc. And uh, if you look at the five years uh, development plan, they expect to uh, um, actually uh, 
extract uh, even more, yeah. even more, like yeah. 24, 25 million tons per year. But what does that mean for prices here? I mean, does that mean that the supply constriction goes, or and we have uh, price pressure dropping, or does that carry on relentlessly? Actually, it means that China is becoming a net importer uh, of aluminium, which is uh, actually a good sign for the market because uh, prior this year the uh, Chinese market was balanced and now they uh, will definitely import aluminium outside of, uh, of the country and Russia is the obvious supplier of aluminium to Chinese market. Yeah, it is, but you haven't answered the question on prices though. What happens and what do you pencil in here? Well, if you look at the uh, independent forecasts, I think it's better to rely on independent research uh, analysts. Uh, the uh, main investment banks increased their forecast for aluminium price by 30 percent. The recent examples, uh, Morgan Stanley, McCoury and Deutsche Bank, etc. So they all expect the aluminium price uh, to go up. To what level then? To 25, 26 uh, hundred US dollars per ton this year and uh, above 3,000 next year. Oh, like just, you know, you like to be conservative with your estimates. So I'm going to say that your conservative in-house estimate is higher than that, isn't it? No, in house, uh, our in-house estimates is a bit um, more conservative. Even more conservative. Even more conservative. So we have to be on the conservative side. So how much more conservative? 2,400. Well, we are considering 2,400. That's right. Right. How okay. did you know? <laughs> <laughs> that was a wild guess. No, you know, you have this investment in uh, Norilsk yes. uh, nickel here. I, you know, what benefit are you seeing from that? Well, uh, you know, Norilsk is the largest uh, uh, nickel company in the world. It's an extremely good asset. It's a fantastic mine. Uh, it's also the leader in uh, platinum and palladium and one of the largest producers of copper in the world. So uh, for us, it's a, it's a very important uh, strategic asset and it has a huge growth potential. In really. Potential is the word, but yes. how much are you benefiting net net? Well, we're benefiting every day actually because the uh, price of uh, shares uh, of Norilsk going up and uh, clearly uh, it's, uh, it's good for our balance sheet. I believe your boss, or colleague, you can call him Mr. Deripaska, has uh, highlighted Japan as a region where you want to seek long-term contracts. Have you gotten anywhere with that? Well, Japan is uh, quite an important uh, country for Rusal, of course, because uh, Rusal is the largest single supp supplier of aluminium to Japan for the long term. And we uh, clearly do have uh, uh, a lot of long-term contracts with uh, many Japanese companies and Japanese trading companies. Oleg, thank you very much indeed for, for joining us. Uh, Oleg uh, Mohamed Chin, he is uh, Rusal's deputy chief executive, just talking about the company after a year after it came to the market right here in Hong Kong. First Russian IPO ever to be held in uh, the city. Right, we're off for a short break. Uh, when we come back, is uh, Japanese Airlines finally on the right route? We have a look at JAL a year after it filed for bankruptcy. RCN, a company of Allianz Global Investors, brings you the Asia-Pacific Index Report.